Well, I need to make an addition to the last video because uh, there's a couple of interesting facets that go along with this demonstration that I think will tweak people's minds and make them wonder just exactly what's taking place. Uh, I'll try to cover that a little later, but I want to show you some of the oddities of this which will make you stop and think for a second. Here's the 48 LEDs that I was showing and here's the driver and the neon, the exciter. Now I want to do something for you. I want to take and just change the neon from a vertical position to a horizontal position and that's all I'm going to do and you watch what happens to the LEDs. Okay, of course they go out when I when I touch it, but I back up. Hmm, they aren't on. The neon's still on. Now the LEDs and the two diodes and the AV plug are horizontal, but it's not working, right? Okay, watch this now. I'm going to take and move it back up, step away, and look at what happened. Now, you should ponder that in your mind. What is really happening with this very small two diode neon light that's affecting the operation of this circuit that radically? From horizontal, no work, to vertical, to work. Now, another thing that I didn't cover in the last video is the signal is coming out of the coil like this or the effect let's call it that we we don't want to assign the name signal to it yet nothing's coming out of the back of it if I orient this like this it seems to continue to work if I take an orient it like this if you notice right there we're starting to get some dimming So we'll go back, move it back the way it was. It's all coming out of the front of the coil, the end that the neon's on. Or the excitation, anyway. We don't really know what's coming out of that. Just want to thought you'd like to see this. I, f I found this was quite interesting. Put that down. It don't work. The neon's still on. That hasn't changed anything. Put it up and it works. Now the Q of these tanks is not high enough that we have changed the resonant frequency that much. In fact, I think what I'll do is another video show you on the spectrum analyzer that what we can see as far as conventional electronics, nothing changes. A couple other things I wanted to cover, so I'm going to stick this at the end of the tape. You're probably going to hear the sound go in and out. And when I get parallel or perpendicular, let's say, to this coil, you're going to have some real sound problems. But I've got this little plastic probe with a single lead that I've talked about for quite some time. Let me show you what what we see in here. What I'm going to do is touch this little pigtail lead I've got on here, and you're going to see that there's nothing coming out of that lead. If I touch it up here at the front end of the AV plug, you see I have signal. As I go down along the coil, you see the whole coil is hot. And I go down here, the input to the coil, you can see that it's hot. You can see that the tower is hot. Let's go back over here. Now here's something that uh, you should find interesting. I sure hope you do because this is a key to everything. Here's the negative terminal of the battery. Look at the output from that lead. Let me zoom in and try to get back here where the sound isn't affected. There's the negative terminal. Here's the positive terminal. Do you see the difference? Negative, positive. Here's this parasitic ground plate that's underneath it. There's nothing on it. Okay? Here's your key. I've talked about this for so long. The inequality between the positive and the negative bus. 